Well, happy Thursday to you boys and girls out there. I hope you guys are ready for our next chapter in our new story, Dark Day in the Deep Sea. Another adventure of Jack and Annie in our Magic Treehouse stories. So, boys and girls, today when we're reading our story, I want you to listen very closely and see if you can find some main events, some important things that happen in our chapter that we read today because that's going to be your job at the end of our chapter later today is to write and illustrate a main event that you recall from our story today. So sit back, get your popcorn out, hopefully you got your PJs on, and you're ready for our fun story. Here we go guys. Chapter 2, Pirates, again? Jack opened his eyes. Teddy and Kathleen were gone. The warm air filled with mist. Jack and Annie peered out the window together. The treehouse had landed in a tall tree with spreading branches. The mist was so thick they couldn't see anything around them. But Jack heard the calls of gulls and the swooshing of rolling waves. He smelt salt water and seaweed. The oceans out there I feel it, said Annie. I hear it, I smell it, said Jack. Then let's go play in it, said Annie. She pulled off her sneakers and socks. We can't just play, Jack said. We have to look for a secret of happiness. Well, I'm happiest when I'm playing in the ocean, Annie started down the rope ladder. I'm sure our mission's harder than that, Jack thought. He took their library books out of his pack and replaced them with the deep sea book. Hurry, said Annie. Jack put on his pack and started down after her. He stepped off the ladder into the misty gr on onto the misty ground. Come on, said Annie. Jack followed Annie towards the sounds of seabirds and waves. They walked through feathery ferns and climbed a sloping sand dune. When they rounded the top, Jack saw waves rolling onto a wide sandy beach. But the ocean itself was still shrouded and covered in a gray haze. Wow, said Annie. Yeah, said Jack. Come on, let's go in it, Annie said. Jack and Annie hurried down the dune and ran towards the ocean. While Annie waded into the water, Jack stood at the edge and pulled out their research book. Listen to this, Annie, he called. Jack read loudly. Water covers three quarters of our earth. Most of the ocean is an enormous plain of little more than two miles deep. But some ocean trenches are more than six miles deep. That's a lot of water. Wow. More than six miles? Annie asked splashing in the water with her hands. It's six miles from our house to Aunt Libby's. I know, said Jack. He read more. The ocean is home to thousands and thousands of sea creatures. Mountains and volcanoes are also hidden deep beneath the surface of the sea. Wow, can you guys believe volcanoes and mountains are underneath the water? Mountains and volcanoes? asked Annie. Under the water? Even Annie didn't know that. That's what the book says, said Jack. The ocean's a whole world we don't know much about. Well, some people know about it, said Annie. Or that book couldn't have been written. Well, that's a good point, thought Jack. Put the book away and come in, Jack, said Annie. The sun's coming out. Jack looked up from his book. The sun was burning away the mist, making the day hotter. Let's go swimming, said Annie. As Annie dove into the wave, Jack put his book back into his backpack. He left his pack on the beach, and then he waded into the water. Great, huh? called Annie. Yeah, Jack said as he dug his toes deep into the soft, gooey sand. Cool seawater sea lapped around his calves. He felt the warm sunshine on his face. Let's swim farther out, said Annie. Maybe the secret of happiness is in the deep sea. How do we go down there without a submarine, asked Jack. 
Look close at that illustration, guys. What do you see in the background? The wand, said Annie. Maybe it will turn us into fish or something. Jack closed his eyes and pictured the darkness of the deep filled with thousands of weird creatures. But the wand can be used only after we've tried our hardest. I don't think we've done that yet, he said. All right, said Annie. Plus, it has to be for the good of others. So first, we have to find some others, Jack said as he rolled his eyes. Jack, you won't believe it, said Annie. What? Jack asked happily. Yeah. Take a look, said Annie. Jack sighed and opened his eyes. The mist had cleared a bit, and the day was becoming bright and hot. I think we just found the others, said Annie. She pointed far out to sea. Men. Jack shaded his eyes and squinted. Through the wavery sunlight, he saw a large wooden ship with three masts. Whoa, he breathed. That's a ship from a long time ago. Yeah, remember when we ran into the pirate ship, said Annie. That ship looks the same, doesn't it? Oh no, said Jack. Pirates again? Look, a rowboat's leaving the ship, said Annie. Oh man, said Jack. It's heading towards us, said Annie. Just like the other time, remember? The pirates came ashore and chased us. Remember? Pinky, Stinky, and Captain Bones? Don't panic, said Jack. Panicking. He splashed out of the water and ran up on the beach. Where should we go, asked Annie, hurrying after him. To the treehouse, said Jack. He grabbed his backpack, but the pirates had climbed up to the treehouse. But the pirates can climb up to the treehouse, said Annie. Pinky and Stinky has found us. Forget Pinky and Stinky, said Jack. Let's get out of here. Jack and Annie charged towards the sand dune. They raced up over the top and ran through the tall ferns and grass until they came to the rope ladder. Up, up, cried Jack. Jack and Annie climbed into the treehouse. Pull up the ladder, said Jack. Together, they hauled the rope ladder after them as they climbed. Where's the Pennsylvania book, said Jack. He looked around wildly for the book that always took them home. He grabbed it and found a picture of Frog Creek. Wait, wait, don't make a wish yet, said Annie. She was looking out the window. I'm not so sure these guys are pirates. Clutching the Pennsylvania book to his chest, Jack looked out the window with Annie. There were three men in the rowboat. The boat rowed the top of a wave and came closer to the beach. Two of the men scrambled out and dragged the boat from the shallow water onto the sand. They both wore huge, bulky vests over white, puffy sleeved shirts. They wore round, white hats and white pants rolled up to their knees. Well, those two don't look like Pinky and Stinky, said Annie. You're right, said Jack. Pirates never wear such clean looking clothes. And look at that third guy, said Annie. The third man stepped out of the boat, carrying a butterfly net. He pulled off his bulky vest, revealing an old-fashioned suit and a bow tie. He definitely looks like a pirate, said Annie. Well, kind of, yeah, said Jack. He, looked like, he looks go, like he go, never, he's never go, been on a boat go. before in his life, though. Maybe so, said Annie. As the two sailors pulled the rowboat farther onto the beach, the man in the bow tie picked up a stick. He started poking at clumps of seaweed. Well, what is he doing, said Jack. The man dropped his stick and picked up something small from the sand. He studied it for a moment. Then he knelt down and pulled a small book out of his pocket and started to write. Who is he, said Jack. I have no idea, said Annie, but one thing is for sure. Pirates don't carry butterfly nets or write in notebooks. Well, you're right, said Jack. He put down the Pennsylvania book. So what's going on? 
Let's go find out, said Annie. Yeah, I'm not too sure if those guys look like pirates either, do they? She dropped the rope ladder back to the ground and started down. Jack grabbed his pack and hurried after her. Together, they ran barefoot over the hot sand and through the feathery ferns. They climbed to the top of the sand dune and looked down. The three men were standing at the edge of the water while the big ship drifted out offshore. Hey, look, you see the name of that ship, said Annie. Jack peered through his haze, through the haze, and read on the side of the ship, HMS Challenger. I'll look it up, he whispered. He pulled out their research book and searched the index. It's here, he whispered. He found the right page and read, the HMS Challenger. HMS stands for Her Majesty's Ship. It was a British Navy vessel that served as the first dedicated scientific exploration ship in the history of the world. Oh man, said Jack, looking up. That is so cool. Yeah, read more, whispered Annie. Jack read on. From 1872 to 1876, the HMS Challenger circled the globe, exploring the dark depths of the ocean. There were over 200 sailors and six scientists on board. So we landed in the, 19, or in the 1870s, said Jack, looking up again. And that guy with the butterfly net must be one of the scientists, said Annie. Come on, let's go meet them, before Jack could tell her to wait. Annie darted down the sand dune. Hey guys, hey guys, she called and waved her arms. Hello. The three men whirled around. Their eyes grew wider and their mouths dropped open. They looked at Annie as if they were staring at a ghost. And that's the end of chapter two. Wow, there was a lot of awesome stuff that happened in that chapter. I want you guys to please pull out your next journal page. And I want you guys to think about one, just one of those main events, something super important that happened in the chapter. I want you to draw a picture, color it, make it detailed, have fun with it, and then write a sentence or maybe two about that special main event. So take your time, have fun guys with it. Don't forget, Capitals at the beginning, finger spaces between your words, and punctuation marks at the end. All right, guys. I hope you guys have a super fantastic day, and I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Don't forget your shades for our morning message. Adios!